The Primal Bulwark Wing is the first wing in the Vault of the Incarnates raid. It is home to Aranog, the Primal Council, and Dathea, the Ascended. Very quickly going to describe how this guide is set up. The video is split into chapters for each boss, you can find them down below. The first chapter will describe the boss fight mechanics and each of the important abilities. The second chapter will be role specific duties. Meaning, if you're the tank what you should do and look for, if you're the healer what you should do and look for, and if you're the DPS what you should do and look for. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Aranog. There are two phases in this fight and they rotate. Phase 1 lasts 90 seconds and phase 2 lasts until you kill the ad. This is a high movement boss fight as there will be lava pools on the ground and there are adds that will chase down players until killed. During phase 1, Aranog will cast Flame Rift. Flame Rift will target several players. These players will have a ring appear around them. They should then gather any location behind the boss but stay out of other players circles. Once the timer hits zero, players will want to move as a lava pool will be left in that area. Once the lava pools are on the ground, it will spawn a group of adds. Each ad will choose a random player as its target and then pursue that player until it is killed. They are not that fast, and you should try to lead the ad through the boss so that it is easily killed by the rest of the raid. The next attack is Molten Spikes. A brown swirly circle will appear on the ground. Do not stand on this as a giant spike will shoot up. Once the spike is up, you will still want to keep some distance from it because when Aranog uses Incinerating Roar, the spike will burst doing additional damage to anyone close by. Incinerating Roar. This attack deals damage to the entire raid and applies a stacking debuff on players. The debuff is dispellable. The last attack is Molten Cleave. This is a frontal melee attack that can hit multiple players. Aranog will target a player and begin charging the cleave. Every player in melee range should get behind him. During phase two, Aranog will run to the center of the room and begin channeling pulsing flames. During this attack, a ring of fire elementals will surround the room and begin moving closer to Aranog. The raid will want to target one elemental and burst it down. Once that elemental is destroyed, an opening will appear for players to run out of the ring. Role Specific Responsibilities Tanks With every auto attack, Aranog will apply Burning Wound. This is a fire damaging debuff that stacks and does more damage with each stack. Therefore, you will want to tank swap every 4-8 to eight stacks dependent upon your gear. You will also want to keep an eye on the lava pools. It's best to tank him in a circle around the room to keep the lava pools in concentrated areas. Healers Be aware of the raid damage during Incinerating Roar. Dispel players with the debuff. Keep an eye on the ads that spawn to ensure one isn't pursuing you. DPS. Try to put the lava pools together. Don't stand in the lava. Watch out for ground spikes. Kill the ads that spawn and use cooldowns during phase two and damage reduction cooldowns during the incinerating roar. The Primal Council. The council is made up of two casters and two melee bosses. They each have their own element and their ability utilizes that element. Each elemental ability interacts with a different elemental ability. So it's very important to understand each ability that is used. All four bosses need to be grouped up together and they need to be killed at about the same time. I will first cover the bosses and their abilities and then I will cover how each ability interacts with the other. Kadros Ice Wrath uses Primal Blizzard. This is a 10 second channeling ability that hits every raid member and will apply a stack of Primal Blizzard every second. This debuff increases frost damage taken by 10% with each stack and if it reaches 10 stacks you will be frozen in place. Being frozen in place puts you in a frost tomb which deals massive damage and the only way to get out is for other players to destroy it. The Primal Blizzard debuff also reduces fire damage by 10%. Embar Firepath uses Meteor Axes, a high damage ability that is split between whatever players are in the circle. This also leaves a scorched ground effect that will persist on the battlefield until it is removed. Slashing Blaze is a frontal cone attack that will deal high damage and then apply a high damage dot to whoever is hit. Dathea Stormlash uses Conductive Mark, which will target several players. This attack stacks, increasing damage the higher your stack. This will also jump to any player that is too close. Chain Lightning will target a random raid member and then will jump to other raid members if they are too close together. Opalfang uses Earthen Pillar. This will spawn below players, move before they trigger, and it will leave a pillar on the battlefield. Now to cover the ability rotation. Opalfang will create Earthen Pillars. Once these pillars are up, Dathea will use Conductive Mark. Whoever gets marked needs to run to the pillars in order to clear off the debuff. 
Once the mark is over, Mbar will use Meteor Axes. The two players targeted need to run towards a different pillar. The axes will destroy the pillars, leaving the Scorched Ground effect. Once the Scorched Ground effect is placed, Kadros will begin channeling Primal Blizzard. Once you have five stacks of the Ice debuff, you will want to dip in and out of the Scorched Ground in order to clear the Blizzard debuff. The process will then repeat. To sum it up simply, if you have electric, run to a pillar. If you have fire, run to a pillar. If you have ice, run to the fire. The scorched ground can and has to be removed. In order to remove the lava pools, a player must stand in the lava while the blizzard is being channeled. By standing in the lava, over time it will remove the lava pool and clear that area. The lava has to be removed, otherwise it will cover the entire battlefield. Just to make sure everybody has removed the debuff at least once to not be frozen. Role Specific Responsibilities Tanks should grab one melee and one caster. Opal Fang and Embar should be tanked separately. Opal Fang and Embar need to be taunt swapped due to Opal Fang using Crush. Crush will increase all damage taken by 100% and its stacks. So once it is applied, you should swap. Healers The entire raid will take increasing damage during the blizzard. Players with Conductive Mark will also need to be spot healed until their debuff is removed. DPS, make sure you're using an AOE build and watch your stacks of Blizzard. Quick interrupt here, if you find this guide helpful, then please press the like button. It's completely free for you, only takes a second of your time and it helps my channel out greatly. So the last boss, Dathea the Ascended. This boss only has one phase, but does summon adds. Everyone should be spread out, but on one side in order for healers to reach everyone. The biggest threat here is getting pushed off of the platform. Raging Burst. The boss will attack a few party members, move out of the circle. Once the attack lands, it leaves behind a Raging Tempest. These tornadoes will move around the battlefield. If you get hit, it will deal damage and then throw you up in the air, causing additional fall damage. Crosswinds. This ability will cause the tornadoes to move very quickly across the battlefield. Locate the tornadoes and observe the arrow in front of it. It shows the direction it's charging. Stay out of the path or it will throw you into the air. Conductive Mark creates a ring of electricity around players and a debuff. This will transfer to other players if they are in the circle. It also stacks. Cyclone will pull players towards the boss. Starts weak but pulls stronger when it's close to expiring. If you reach the boss, you are thrown up into the air. Coalescing Storm. The boss will freeze in the middle of the arena and summon an ad. The ad, when killed, will cast Blowback, which knocks players up and back a very far distance. These need to be moved to the edge of the platform, and players should ensure that they are between the ad and the boss, being closest to the ad when it is killed. Otherwise, you could get blown off the side. Role Specific Responsibilities Tanks Dathea will use Zephyr Slam. This will apply a debuff that increases damage taken and increases the knockback distance by 55%. This stacks. Tanks should swap at two stacks. Healers Cyclone will deal damage to the entire raid. The adds will also deal continuous damage to the entire raid until they are killed. DPS, kill the adds. Keep distance between other players and don't get knocked off the platform. So that's it for the first wing. Let me know in the comments which of these bosses is your favorite. Personally, I think the Primal Council is the best fight. If this guide was helpful, then please press the like button. If you enjoy WoW guys and consider subscribing to the channel, you can also support me by checking out my Patreon or channel memberships. I'll see you in the next one.